the 28 year wait. It was certainly worth the buildup here in Phoenix for game one of the finals with the hometown Suns walking away with a 118 105 win here in game one. Lots of happy Suns fans leaving Phoenix Suns Arena. Giannis Antetokounmpo answered the question, would he play? Yes, played pretty well for the most part, had an impact, but not enough to stop Phoenix, which jumped out early. Devin Booker with 16 of his 22 in the first half when the Suns set the tone offensively. And then Chris Paul, as he has done so often in these playoffs, took over, taking advantage of defensive switches. He went for 27 through three quarters and kept it up with a 32 point night nine assists along the way Booker actually finished with 27 excuse me in a monster night from DeAndre eight with 22 points and 19 rebounds historic in fact as Phoenix wins it 118 to 105 welcome in it's game time live at the finals presented by YouTube TV we got our friends behind us we got champions here on the set Steve Smith Isaiah Thomas and joining us remotely Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny Smith. I'll, I'll turn to the fellas who are in the arena along with us. First of all, so great to be here and to have this atmosphere again for the finals. What struck you about game one here, Smitty? Well, it started off, Isaiah, uh, when you looked at it, uh, Devin Booker set the tone for me in the first quarter, getting a chance to get in rhythm. But in that third quarter, I still can't understand how they're going to quit <laughs> switching one five pick and roll and Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and their entire Suns team got whatever they wanted in that third quarter with that one five switching of the pick and rolls of the Milwaukee Bucks. Adjustments, yeah. not for the Milwaukee Bucks. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that, that's the thing that stood out to me the most. Yeah. Um, you know, Chris Paul in the third quarter, Devin Booker taking you know really taking turns against Lopez they figured out the Milwaukee defense once they figured out the defense they let Paul play in the middle of the floor and you cannot let a, a point guard this good with this kind of skill stay in the middle of the floor matched up against a seven foot center it, it you know it's, it's a point guard's dream and Chris Paul lived it tonight. Uh, Brooke Lopez is a much improved defensive player, but he is a fish out of water in that situation against Paul or Booker. Likewise, Bobby Portis. They were targeting him when Lopez came out of the game. Bucks went a little smaller at the beginning of the fourth quarter, and that's something to watch for as this series progresses. Shaq, for you, uh, watching at home, what's your takeaway from game one? Well, I thought, you know, Phoenix played well. I thought the others played great. DeAndre Ayton as a big man. Great start his first finals. I'm really proud of him. Uh, it's nice, and you know, Isaiah and, and you know, Steve and Kenny knows about this. It's nice when you can have a one two punch. You know, first half was all Devin Booker, and then that third quarter, Chris Paul said, You know what? This is my first finals. I'm going to work. I know what I got to do. But the others played great. The dancer played great. He played with great energy. They fed off the energy off the crowd, and they did what they're supposed to do. As for Milwaukee, they're going to win. The one-two punch for Milwaukee has to be remarkable. You know, in the uh, you know in the uh, you know pregame we talked about you know the two uh, meetings between Milwaukee and Phoenix. How Giannis averaged 40. He's gonna have to probably average around that you know to get a win. Kenny, to you, uh, what did you see here in Game One tonight? Well, I'm probably gonna reiterate what um, Steve and, and Isaiah said. First of all, you think about this. If Chris Paul was guarding Lopez in the post, would they come double? You'd be like, yeah, they come double him. So why when Lopez is guarding Chris Paul on the perimeter that you allow him to play one-on-one? -on -one? It's like, it's the, it's the, it's, it looks like the silliest thing that you've ever seen. If you're a point guard at any magnitude who can score the basketball, you go, this is exactly what I want. If you're a post guy, you go, this is what I want. So I don't understand it. Um, it looked very similar to Atlanta game one when they had the drop defense and that would didn't work uh, against uh, Trey Young. They're going to have to make the adjustment, either go small or you're going to have to double the pick and roll a hedge and get over. You cannot allow. You would never let Brooke Lopez play one on one in the post against Chris Paul. No team would do that. So why would you do it in reverse? Just th that's the logic. If you're a fan at home, that's how simple it is. Yeah, it, it was it was baffling for those of us watching it take place because of how long it went on for the Bucks with this 
this defensive switching and putting Lopez and then Portis out on that island repeatedly. You know, you know Isaiah, Matt, Kenny and Shaq, I, I understand if the guy couldn't get over, he got hung up on the pick. But it was a, almost an automatic switch. It was easy. Yeah. If you're going to come out, you got to at least try to get over, like Kenny said. Also for me is fight, fight, fight as yeah. the team. I'm going to make an adjustment if the coach is not going to make an adjustment. We're going to do something differently because it was just too easy. It looks like they was playing practice run through the <laughs> offense against the Milwaukee Bucks defense. So I do have a question if I could ask. Yeah, please. Isaiah. Isaiah, if you played in this modern day era and you could just pick out the defender and say, that's the guy I want to guard me because they're going to switch. How many? Now, you almost left. Did you leave the league and score one year or come close to it? I don't remember. You and Kelly Chapuka. But how many points in game would you average? Because you're very similar in size and stature. In a season, if you could pick out every single time which guy to guard. I, I mean, easy, easy, easy 40. Especially if they're going <laughs> to let me shoot the basketball as often as the point guard gets to shoot it. Really easy 40 because now I'm shooting layups and I'm getting any shot that I want against a big man. I mean, it, it, it really is unfair to have a, a big man guard a small man out on the perimeter and because all you're going to do is take him to the basket. Like I say, Chris Paul got a chance to live his dream tonight by having bigs and power forwards out him on guarding him out on the perimeter. Well, we'll get into that a little deeper as we continue on right now. Let's welcome in Mikhail Bridges, fresh off his very first NBA Finals game and a win nonetheless. He had uh, 14 tonight, knocked down a couple of threes as well. Mikhail, thanks for being with us. You, like uh, like everybody else on the floor, aside from Jay Crowder, uh, was experiencing this for the very first time. Yep. What's your takeaway from, from your first Finals taste? Um, it's amazing. You know, you want to play at this level as a kid, and you finally get your opportunity to be here. So um, I'm just grateful I'm here and um, try to take advantage of it and, you know, try to play as hard as I can and try to help my team win. A team like Phoenix, who as a group had not competed in the playoffs yep. yet, to win 16 games, man, that seemed like a, quite a mountain, right? I mean, that's typically there's a, a, a growth process here. They've got 13 wins, and Chris Paul's role in this 13th win, as you were there in the building, how would you best describe what he provided this Suns group tonight? Well, it was a sensational performance. You've got a veteran leader that's had 16 years in the league, and even with the void of a championship, is still recognized as one of the greatest point guards who have ever played this game. But yep. when you couple that with the inabilities of the Milwaukee Bucks, you look at CP3 and you say, well, duh, what did you expect from him? When you're going to put Bobby Portis on him, when you got Brooke Lopez on him, when you got P.J. Tucker on him. Wilbon and I were just talking about that a few minutes ago. What the hell do you expect is going to happen? It is mind-boggling to me how I'm, I don't, I don't want to be insulting, but absolutely clueless the Milwaukee Bucks appeared last night in being, in, you know, in being prepared for this game. Uh -huh. You know that CP3 and Devin Booker, you know what they're going to give to you, particularly when they're hitting their perimeter shots. But a guy like CP3 is literally picking defenders. Who am I going to pick on next? Right. And absolutely, positively no adjustment was made whatsoever. And that's why he looked so spectacular. So you didn't want to be insulting, but you, but they were clueless. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be. Look, look, Scott, man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to be nice, but at the same time, give you and our audience what it is. Tim yep. Legler was and, right there. He's far nicer than me, I guess. But the bottom right. line is, he knows what he knows exactly what I'm saying. If you look at the adjustments and then look at the ball hey, movement, look at how Monty Williams I, I has these guys moving without the ball. But I'm Milwaukee was.